Good morning students. Today we are going to start with a new chapter of civics of class 8 that is judiciary. Now, in the previous chapters we have studied about the Indian constitution, about secularism, we have studied about how parliament has been formed, we have also studied how the laws have been formed. Now, this chapter deals with judiciary. Judiciary means court system. We have three branches of government. First, that is legislature, which makes laws. Executive, which implements laws. And judiciary, that is the third branch of the government, that is court system. They see that everybody is following laws and if anybody is denied with justice. So they are there to give justice to the people. Now, what is Judiciary of India? The Judiciary of India is an independent body and is separate from the executive, legislative bodies of the Indian government. The judicial system of India is stratified into various levels. At the first, that is apex, is the Supreme Court, which is followed by high courts at the state level, district courts at the district level and lok adalats at the village and panchayat level. The Judiciary of India takes care of maintenance of law and order in the country along with solving problems related to civil and criminal offences. The judiciary system that is followed in India is based on the British legal system that was prevalent in the country during pre-independence era. Very few amendments have been made in the judicial system of the country. As you can see over here, that's a court, scene of a court. Now, there are various roles of judiciary. Judiciary is a key mechanism for ensuring legal, legal effectiveness of environmental law and it is well prepared and informed of the rapidly expanding environmental law plays a critical role in the implementation and enforcement of environmental law. As you can see on the board that it successfully conclusion of environmental cases, particularly cases of transnational crimes providing a strong disincentive to non-compliance of environmental laws by providing access to the public and civil society to judicial procedures. Through current networking among judiciaries and exchange of judgments and sharing information on environmental cases and international jurisprudence. There are Majorly three work of judiciary as it's given in the book also there are three major role or you can say the work of judiciary. The first role of judiciary is to dispute resolution. Means there could be a dispute or a conflict between citizens, between two citizens, between citizens and the government, between two state governments and between the center and the state government. So it is a former duty of the judiciary to bring dispute resolution. The second role of judiciary is judicial review. Here, the judiciary also has the power to strike down any particular law passed by the parliament if it believes that these are violation of the basic structure of the constitution. In the previous chapter, that is understanding laws, we have studied that sometimes parliament pass such laws which are unpopular or which become a matter of conflict between the citizens or a matter of conflict in the country. So in that case, Supreme Court has the power to guide uh, parliament to strike down such laws which is creating problem in the country. What is judicial review? The power of the judiciary to review laws and governmental actions to see whether they conform to the constitution if they violate the constitution, the court has the power to overturn them. Now, the third role of judiciary is to uphold the law and enforcing fundamental rights. At any point of time, judiciary's first role is to give justice to the people. If any point of time, any citizen of the India can approach the Supreme Court or the High Court if they believe that their fundamental rights have been violated or if they believe that the justice has been denied to them. There are several cases in India where the justice was denied to the victims. Over there, it is their duty 
to give justice as well as to uphold laws and enforce fundamental rights because everybody is equal before the law. Now, the second part of judiciary. We have started about what is judiciary and role of judiciary. Now, the second part of judiciary or you can say the second part is that the independent judiciary. The name itself says independent means judiciary is absolutely independent and no other branches of the government can interfere in the work of judiciary. Neither legislature nor executive. Even the president of the country and prime minister of India cannot interfere in the works of judiciary. They are absolutely independent. The separation of power is a fundamental guarantee of the independent judiciary. The Indian constitution provides for an independent judiciary. The judiciary has been made independent of the executive as well as the legislature. The judges give impartial justice. Now, we have different structure of courts in India. As you can see on the board, there is a diagram stating Supreme Court as the highest court, after that High Court and after that, that is Lower Court. Now, Supreme Court of India, that is the highest court. Its decisions are binding on all courts, can transfer judges of High Courts, can move cases from one court to itself, can transfer cases from one High Court to another High Court. Role of High Court they can hear appeals from lower court, can issue writs for restoring fundamental rights, can deal with cases within the jurisdiction of the state, exercise super independence and control over courts below it. Now, the word has come jurisdiction. What is jurisdiction? The power to pass judgment in cases. That is called jurisdiction. There is one more name, appellate jurisdiction. Power of the court to review the decisions and change the outcome of the decisions of previous lower court. There is one more that is supervisory jurisdiction, keeping a watch over the working of the lower court. Cases filed by individuals on matters of public interest, that is jurisdiction. The third is district court, deals with cases arising in the district considers appeals on decisions given by lower courts, decides cases involving serious criminal offences and after district court there is subordinate courts. You can see on the board types of courts in India. There are three types of courts in India. Supreme Court, High Court and District Courts. Let's begin with the highest court of the country, that is Supreme Court. Supreme Court of India stands at the apex of the entire judicial system. It consists of a Chief Justice and not more than 25 judges. Every judge of Supreme Court shall be appointed by the President. And currently, our, the Chief Justice of India is Justice Deepak Mishra. It was established on 26 January 1915. Like its predecessor, the Federal Court of India from 1937 to 1949. It was earlier located in the Chamber of Prince in the Parliament House. It moved to its present building on Mathura Road in New Delhi in 1958. The Supreme Court India is the highest court in the country and moved to the current building in 1958 as told before. The building is shaped to project the image of the scales of justice with the central wing above corresponding to the center beam of the scales. In 1979, two new wings, the east wing and west wing were added to the complex. In all their 15 courtrooms in various wings of the building, the Chief Justice Court is the largest of the courts located in the center of the central wing. Now, after Supreme Court, the second highest court of the states are High Court. Every state has their own High Court. 
Seven states in East India, which is also known as Seven Sisters, share one high court situated in Guwahati. Punjab and Haryana have one high court in Chandigarh. And currently in India, there are 24 high courts. These are some of the examples. This is High Court of Chhattisgarh. This is High Court of Rajasthan that is situated in Jodhpur. This is High Court of Kerala. High Court of Bombay. Now, District Courts. After High Court, there are District Courts. The highest court in each district that of the district and session judge. This is the principal court of original civil jurisdiction besides high court of the state and which derives its jurisdiction in civil matters primarily from the code of civil procedure. The district court is also a court of sessions when it exercises its jurisdiction on criminal matters under code of criminal procedure. The district court is presided over by one district judge appointed by the state government. In addition to the district judge, there may be number of additional district judges and assistant district judges depending on the workload. Appointment. Appointment of district judge and other additional and assistant district judges is done by the state government in constitution with the high court of the state. A minimum of seven years of practice as a lawyer at bar is necessary qualification. District judges are also appointed by way of elevation of judges from courts subordinate to district courts provided they fulfill the minimum years of service. Now, there are two branches of the legal system. One is criminal law and other is civil law. The cases are being divided into criminal and civil law. In criminal law, we have cases such as murder, theft, kidnapping, women harassment, dowry, etc. And in civil law, we have cases such as divorce cases, property cases, sale and purchase of goods and land. In criminal law, the first procedure is to go to the police station file an FIR and after lodging of an FIR, the investigation will going to begin and then the case will, the charge sheet will be filed by the police people in the court and after that if the person is guilty, that person will be sent to the jail or they will be fined. In civil law, a petition has to be filed before the relevant court by the affected party only in a rent matter either the landlord or tenant can file a case. Here, the role of the police begins after the case has been filed in the court. In the criminal law, the role of the police is begin after the filing of a FIR. The court gives the specific relief for the, uh, for the people and uh, bet like between the landlord and between the tenant. The court can order the flat to be vacated or pending rent to be paid. That is in civil law. Access to the courts. As we all believe that all citizens of India can access the courts in the country. Every citizen has a right to justice through courts. That courts play a significant role in protecting our fundamental rights. That we believe. But do we really have access to the courts? Yes, justice is not denied at all. But what is the foremost duty of the judiciary is to give justice not only to the rich people or to the influent people, but give justice to everybody. Even the poorest of the poorest people of our country should get justice. And to increase the accessibility of the courts, Supreme Court have launched PIL, that is, Public Interest Litigation, PIL. Let's see what is PIL, that is Public Interest Litigation. The Indian Constitution allows any public spirited person, NGO or a public interest law firm 
to file a case on behalf of a group of persons whose rights are affected. The court can also act on its own motion. A PIL must be filed against government authorities, but private parties can also be included as a correspondence. Cases in which a PIL can be filed include environmental degradation, violation of basic human rights of the poor, content or conduct of government policy, to compel municipal authorities to perform a public duty, violation of religious rights or other basic fundamental rights. So these are certain cases where PIL can be filed. Now, how to file PIL? In response to the situation in India, the Supreme Court in the early 1980s devised a mechanism of public interest litigation to increase access to justice. It allowed any individual or organization to, to file a PIL in the High Court or in the Supreme Court on behalf of those whose rights are being violated. The legal process was greatly simplified and even a letter or telegram addressed to the Supreme Court or the High Court could be treated as PIL. Now, however, in spite of this, there is no denying that the judiciary has played a crucial role in democratic India, serving as check on the powers of the executive and the legislature as well as in protecting the fundamental rights of citizens. The members of the Constituent Assembly had quite correctly envisioned a system of courts with an independent judiciary as a 